If you're getting a teardrop trailer, uh, you may be wondering what to carry with it. You probably have your own ideas, you know exactly what you need, and you're in good shape. But at the risk of uh, being redundant, uh, I made a few changes here and there. I'll go through what's in mine. You can scrutinize it, take what you want, and throw away the rest. So I'll go top to bottom. I'll try and move quickly, not to tie you up for hours. Uh, okay, so uh, up here, I'm carrying some wipes. Good for hygiene. Come in handy. You don't want to run the water. Uh, silicone, silicone measuring cups. Measuring. They're uh, three different sizes: uh, the shot glass, the uh, the wine glass, and the beer glass. So uh, multi-purpose. These you can squeeze when you pour. Uh, they come in handy for a lot of things, and they are also a cup for drinking if somebody needs that. Um, I love these. Um, silicone pot holders, as I've said before. I've got an adequate supply. I use them for coasters because the uh, waffle weave catches things. This is a, uh, a silicone mat. This is great for putting pots on, especially like a pot lid. Uh, the pot lid is sweating. You put it on here, nothing gets wet, and uh, it, the, the mat catches it all. Uh, voltage monitor. There's a million of these available. I have a couple of different types. They're great. They uh, keep an eye on the voltage. Solar panels are doing great. Uh, on this side, I have two insulated mugs with lids. Lots of silicone cups for people who are thirsty. I primarily use these, uh, these plastic cups. Um, they come with lids. I'll show those later. They have lids and a straw, so it becomes like a sippy cup. So if you're driving and you want to use them, I put down plastic, ribbed plastic in here, so when I put something wet in here, it will, uh, will not harm the wood. Uh, paper towels, uh, silicone spoon holders. I've talked about those in other uh, spoon holders, pot holders, hors d'oeuvre holders, sponge holders. They're uh, just great. I'm seeing those around, showing up on the uh, on YouTube, on other people's trailers. Uh, hand sprayer. It's great. It saves water when you want to wash your hands. Uh, this is a uh, Cosmo Weems invention. I have the sink, but I wanted to direct the water a little bit more. It almost looks inappropriate, right? But it, uh, it allows me to direct the stream a little bit better if I need to. I'm looking for a sprayer for the end of this. That would help cut down on water usage. Uh, so, water, you know, this trailer holds nine gallons of water. That's, uh, there is a water tank. I use that water tank, it's full now. I use it for rinsing and washing dishes. Uh, the, the flow is a gallon a minute, so it's gonna go quick. You gotta be very thrifty. So I use the hand sprayer quite a bit uh, to, you know, I'll wet the dishes, soap them up, uh, then, spray them down. I don't let the water run. You let the water run, you'll be out of water in no time. Of course, the, uh, the stove is uh, an essential part of the kitchen, and it's uh, a Dometic stove. The pass-through. Uh, many people have asked, you know, what is this for? These screens come out. You can take the screen out and just have it wide open if that's your thing. So uh, that's, a, that's a great thing. Okay, up here we have a utility drawer, which I put a mirror on. So now I have a mirror on board. Uh, I carry service for six, spoons, uh, forks. Uh, gotta have a pair of tongs. These are really good. I have two pair of tongs if I'm flipping toast or cooking something. A spreader for reaching into jars and spreading stuff around. Some goo, some extra cooking spoons. A uh, miniature spatula, which is uh, always a good thing for uh, cooking. A slotted spoon. Tonight I'm having ravioli for dinner, uh, fresh ravioli, very delicious. It's a place where mothers can bring their children and get the residential treatment they need for substance use disorder. Now it's time to pick up well in the sick. Slotted spoon for picking them out and letting it drain. Measuring spoons. A garlic peeler. Put your garlic in there and roll it, and it crush. You know, it'll it'll take off the skin. A second and a third spreader. I guess I like these things. I uh, usually only uh, I'll probably take one out. 
bunch of sharp dinner knives. Uh, this is a heavy duty spreader for spreading peanut butter and, and thick gooey things. If I have the peanut butter or almond butter in the freezer, this is uh, strong enough to spread that without bending. So all that fits in here pretty comfortably. Okay, down here, so right below on that side, over here, I've got a little nook. And in that nook is a fabric basket, which I can put out. If we are doing something, I can put it on a table, I can put condiments in there, I can put uh, whatever I want, keys, whatever I want to not lose, I can put in there. Uh, in my nook and cranny, I have a bunch of USB cables. I just have, every time I go camping, people come over to my trailer and they want to charge something. Maybe the solar panels are the indicator. These are audio cables for my phone or a MP3 player to connect to some speakers. I carry a bunch of tea light candles, which uh, occasionally I use, some chopsticks. Chopsticks are just like a little dowel. I use them all over the place. Uh, a notepad, which is uh, an important thing with a pen. More tea lights. Each of these burns about three or four hours. Let's go with three. That's 18 hours of light and heat there, plus uh, another four, another uh, six. So uh, I got a lot of uh, a lot of lighting. Keep a little uh, microfiber towel also. Dishcloth is good. Okay. Uh, let's go down here. So from the drawer, I've removed my uh, my cutlery. And the lighting's a little tough here, but you can see I've got an assortment of knives. None of these are serrated. Uh, I can't sharpen a serrated knife out in this field, so uh, or I don't want to. This is a uh, six inch, and the rest are a little bit smaller. And uh, I use that for fine cutting. Small pair of scissors, which is handy, very handy. Then in the drawer, I've also got a, uh, a basting brush, which I've yet to use, but I'm sure I will at some point. Uh, maybe when I bake a turkey on here. Okay. Uh, hooks. I'll go into these later. Um, battery tester for AA and AAA batteries. An extremely loud whistle for bears. Counter. 12 volt USB chargers. Assorted junk here. So that's the main top drawer. It holds all sorts of stuff. Uh, down here, a uh, collapsible wash tub. Lids for my jo my uh, my my pots, glass lids. They're all glass lids that you can see through, like this one, uh, which helps with cooking. So you've got your glass lid. You take it off the stove. You put it on here, and it won't run all over the place. The water. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. These are multi-purpose uh, placemat cutting boards. So they're, they're actually sold as cutting boards, but I use them as placemats. I've got a bunch of them. Uh, maybe uh, enough for uh, four or six people. I don't know. Uh, come on over. I'll make you dinner. The bottom drawer contains pots and pans. I have my favorites. Uh, we have a, uh, a three-quart pot. We have a, a small fry pan. I have a bigger casserole pan here, which is really fantastic. Use it quite a bit. Um, and a uh, water boiling pot. All these have lids. Uh, but most importantly, this is an open area and it's exposed to wind. There are bird wings which help with rain, wind driven rain from the sides. It's a beautiful day, I don't need to deploy the burnt wings, but very important are these uh, windscreens. Um, I have two of them, one for each burner. Uh, without it, it uh, could often be a problem to cook without a windscreen for me. Um, if it's calm weather, hey, no problem. But uh, I can surround a pot or pan with this. Uh, if you backpack, you're no stranger to this. You're very familiar with it. If you want to save fuel and you want things to cook quicker, this is a great way to do it. I have two of them, one for each burner, and uh, costs a couple of bucks each, and uh, I, I won't travel without them. So this side has a lot of space. There's a bucket in there. 
Uh, there's a, I store a cutting board in there, which fits the, uh, the sink. Uh, Vistabule gave me that. Uh, and I've got this reusable space here. In the bucket, I have a whisk broom for sweeping up messes. Very handy, uh, very important. Okay, uh, a bunch of plastic piping and contractor bags in the rain. You want contractor bags to throw your crap in and dry it out when you get home. Uh, the bucket can be used as a bathroom. You line it with plastic bags if that's necessary. Not necessary here, I've got a bathroom right over there. So, uh, so that's, uh, the, I find the buckets to be pretty uh, useful if you need to haul water or, uh, or do things with them. This particular one I put on a screw-on lid so it, uh, I can load it up with water, put it in the car and transport it. Now, this is also for showers. I'll show you that later. I think that pretty much covers the, uh, the kitchen section, but I will say this. I opted for a refrigerator. Now, I'll talk about coolers and refrigerators later, but the advantage of what I've got here is this refrigerator, I can pick this up and move this out and put in a cooler if I want, or put the refrigerator back. If I need to use the refrigerator in the car, I can use it in the car, take it with me. Um, I find it a uh, portable refrigerator is pretty useful. Um, also, if I don't need refrigeration, I can take this out and use this space. I mean, this is an enormous amount of space in here. I had uh, Bert and uh, the guys at Vistabule, uh, uh, Jeff and those guys, they put in an outlet for me. It's like a DC and AC outlet here, so I can plug in the, uh, the refrigerator. This refrigerator is AC-DC. Uh, I can use it in a campground on AC, or I can use it on DC here camping. And it's uh, a Dometic CFX-35. Uh, Pretty happy with it so far. It's keeping the food cold. Fresh food's a nice thing. I use a, uh, a fan to even out the temperature in here. I'm gonna do a video dedicated just to refrigerators, everything you wanted to know about it. But uh, it only draws a half an amp an hour, which is spectacular. I do pre-chill it. I chill it uh, for 24 hours before I leave. Uh, that way, I don't have to expend the energy cooling it down. So back to the other stuff I lug around. A must-have. Uh, these are GCI tables. Uh, these are three years old. This is a 2015 Vistabule. Vistabule is always refining and always improving. So you find some changes to the new ones. Uh, this one, these GCI tables, absolutely great. Stick them where you want. You know, I, I, I don't want an attached table because uh, I can move it around and use it for a lot of things. The GCI table is really good. Uh, it's a must have for me. Uh, my stuff is stored in tubs. Solar panels are working great. I really like movable solar panels. Um, I was initially gonna put them on a fixed point on the trailer. I changed my mind <laughs> after a few weekends out. The sun moves, uh, changes angles during the day. Um, I camp under trees. Uh, I'm always looking for the best solar exposure. So if you're out in uh, Arizona or some treeless state, and uh, be no problem to get them anywhere. You can put the solar panel anywhere on your roof, everywhere. <laughs> Wouldn't be a problem. But for me, um, it's always a struggle uh, here in the Northeast, the lush Northeast with all these uh, trees and things. It's always... Uh, uh, necessary for me to get the right exposure to the sun. I have about a 15 foot wire on here. I may put an extension cord on. There are losses in the wire, but I think I can tolerate it. The solar panels feed the trailer through a Y connector that I made. Or I purchased and I adapted it. And uh, I can connect two solar panels or one, uh, depending on what I need. Here's the AC outlet for when I'm in a campground. I just plug in that AC outlet. So, energy department's totally covered. Uh, if we go around here, you got the tables, which are, of course, great. All right? They, they changed the form of the table. The, the table has a slightly different shape for 2018. Okay. Uh, you know, all the storage, I've showed a lot of this already down here. Tent stakes, spare solar controller, uh, a volts and ohms meter. 
a lot of wire, jumpers, compass, uh, another whisk broom, tent stakes. Got to have a lot of tent stakes. When I put out the carpets, I have to stake them down. It takes four per carpet. The wind walls on the uh, on some of this require okay, hold on. require stakes. Okay, in here are battery chargers for AA batteries, camera battery chargers, uh, Teflon tape for pipes. Um, ooh, tools. Let me show you the tools. Minimal tools. Channel locks, vice grips, real small needle nose pliers, electrical tape, a fine jeweler screwdriver, uh, a ratcheted screwdriver with a bunch of bits to tighten up screws if needed. Um, good old toilet paper, you never know. Small axe, uh, shovel. Uh, I really think a shovel is an important thing to have along for a lot of reasons, digging your way out of a number of different things. Uh, okay, small hammer. Um, in the front, I just opened it up, I found a laundry bag with dirty laundry from my last trip. Gotta get that out. Okay. Uh, log book. Got 80 some odd nights in a trailer. Getting good experience. Small first aid kit. Lots and lots of USB wires, jumper wires, all sorts of electrical wiring that I could use. Uh, a multi-port USB charger. As I said, everybody's power hungry when they come to visit me. Uh, this is a pillowcase. You can stuff some clothing in here. Have a pillow, tripod, uh, books. Okay, a field guide. This contains minerals, plants, birds, animals, everything. Uh, and everything, you insects, whatever you see out here on the upper uh, East Coast, you can find in this book. Also a dedicated birding book. A whistle. Uh, you know the international whistle code, right? You should. One toot is come here. No, one toot is I'm over here. Two toots is come to me. Three toots is I need help. So when you hear those whistles, now you'll know what they're saying. Yeah. Another small tripod. I should use those tripods. Ventilation ports. There's my, uh, let me, pat, let me get the other tub out. Uh, LED lighting, jumper cables for battery chargers. Passes for parks. Uh, I have uh, senior citizen passes. Um, microfiber channels for sopping up anything that spills early in a white. People are always telling me, what about condensation? And so far, no problem with condensation anywhere. However, in the morning, sometimes when I get up, the uh, beautiful picture window has some um, breath on it. Uh, you know, condensation from the night. So I'll take this microfiber channel, I'll wipe the window down and sop that up. These channels, these towels wring out and dry really fast. So uh, that's what it's here for. If I lay under the window at night and look up, uh, I will get some condensation, but what I do is I open these ports. You just grab this ventilation port. And you open it up, and then you turn on the ceiling fan, and that will uh, create an inflow of air right where you're laying, looking up at the sky, and it will help uh, uh, prevent condensation. So far, it's worked pretty good. I get some good stargazing in without a problem. Okay, a... Uh, Mosquito head net. Uh, let me tell you. Okay, this is copper wire uh, LED lighting. It runs on four AA batteries. I can put this outside under the canopy if I want lighting, and uh, it'll run seven days, 168 hours on four AA's. I think this is a 10 or 15 foot string, and it uh, when you need it, you know, if you want it, it's great. Um, if you're it's a soft, very soft lighting, so if you're out looking at, you know, uh, if you don't want bright lighting, this is a good one. I normally prefer darkness, but if you need a little lighting, this is good. So you can find your way around with it, you know, get, get some food or drink and pour yourself a drink of water or something. So it's good for that. Okay. Uh,
There are a couple of solar panels here. These are USB solar panels. They'll charge USB devices, very handy. Um, well, the trailer has a lot of electricity. What's up with this? Um, if you want to go, if you're not at the trailer and you want to charge something, or uh, I'm always worried about a system failure, which has not happened, uh, this will allow you to charge it. I can charge several different things and reduce the charging on the, on the uh, trailer if I need to. Uh, you know, with solar, you need to see a shadow. So here's my solar panel. There's a slight shadow under that. I'm charging pretty well. Um, if you have a shadowless day and it's pretty dim, um, you could have a problem with solar. I can barely squeak by with my 200 watts of power. They, they, so far, they've kept me topped off. I'm in an open area here. I'm not deep in the forest. That could be a problem. So uh, deep in the forest. So, so far, no problem. I do hear a wood thrush calling. That's a uh, warbler. But the, uh, maybe we'll get a better sound in that wood thrush later. They're migrating through here. Uh, along the Delaware River, this is a major flyway for migrating warblers and birds. Uh, so it's, uh, it's really good. I'm going to do some bird watching later. So that's these tubs in the front. People always ask me, what's in that, in that, uh, that tongue box, that internal tongue box? Now, they don't make this anymore. You can't get it. Stop your crying and uh, use the external one, which is just fine. Um, it's lighter weight, the external one. This added a little weight to the tongue. Uh, since I was getting it though, I had them put in electricity and I had them put in uh, extra 12 volt all around the trailer. Now on the other side, let's slide over. Let's open up the other side. Uh, I haven't really yet realized the full potential of this tongue box. I got this specifically for amateur radio gear. I'm a ham radio operator, and uh, that's why I had all the wiring put in and everything, and the electricity. Um, but I'm going to have time to do that soon, so I'll be able to communicate anywhere in the world while I'm out uh, in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so uh, here is a uh, plastic box for shoes. Uh, when I have a guest along, there's usually two of these boxes, so we can stick our shoes outside the trailer. Uh, very important. Two space blankets, uh, red and a blue. Uh, these are really good when you're lounging around outside at night and it gets cool, or dew is settling. You just spread this over you, and it, um, it you know, if it's breezy at all, it cuts the wind, and it does provide a measure of warmth. You could use your sleeping bag if you want to use that, but um, this is just another alternative, and uh, I really like it. It's uh, very useful. If you want to do yoga, you want to, you know, do some exercises, floor exercises, whatever, space blanket's great. If it's raining, you can put it over you as a poncho. Yeah, there's no end to it. It's, it's just a great little thing to have. Along with the outstanding window is, of course, the couch. It's multi-purpose. Um, let me go around the other side. Many teardrops, you're either in it either in bed or you're uh, or you're outside not so with this one uh, you've got a complete working office uh, in my case with full electricity uh, and the uh, vestibule table so um, at first I wasn't too impressed with this but I'll tell you what the first time I used it I was sold. <laughs> it's a great thing. It comes along. It's still here. I said, well, I can always leave it home. I'll get some other table in here. Nonsense. It's, uh, it, it really is great. And you have a lot of room with a view. I'll show you uh, the opposite side view. Um, it's fantastic. But for now, I'm going to take it down. And convert to bed mode. I can find the lever. Okay. So to convert to bed mode, you just lift this up, press this down, and give it a little weight, and you're in bed mode. It's that easy. And then you've got these cabinets back here. Right. 
Um, I've had the teardrop trailer two years, two and a half years, 2015, January of 2015, I picked it up. And over that time, I've accumulated a lot of gear to use in here. And I thought I would share with you uh, two tubs which are dedicated to the trailer, these two tubs. And one, the top one contains all the kitchen gear that's not carried in a trailer. It's extra stuff. And the bottom one is just uh, odds and ends that I need for the trailer that I feel are a good idea to carry along. So I'll start with the top one. Um, obviously, your trailer is your trailer, and you're going to want to carry what you pick for it. Just showing you some ideas of what I've got. I don't take all this all the time, but it, um, it's a starting place. Maybe it's just a place to think about. Uh, where, you know, maybe just a, some ideas to think about when you are buying. So let me dump this tub out, and we'll take a look at uh, what all the crap I'm carrying. Okay, here it all is, the contents of the tub. Uh, U.S. Postal Envelope, which carries a lot of reusable Ziploc bags. Uh, food storage is uh, a must, and I've got a lot of ways to store it. Dinnerware for two. These are uh, Okasa flat uh, flat dishes. So this this little envelope contains a bowl a bowl, a dish, and a cup. And they all fold flat. Uh, guest, uh, guest uh, tableware. Leftovers are an important issue for me. Um, I've got to have containers. I've, these silicone containers have done quite well over a couple of years. They're still with me. Um, they allow me to store food. They come with lids, and they are watertight, but you know you can't squeeze them. So if you put gravy or something in there, something saucy, it'll hold it, but don't squeeze it. It may leak. A knife sharpener. None of my knives are serrated. They're all straight edge, which allows me to sharpen them myself on the road. Uh, Ziploc bags, again for food storage. More Ziploc bags. Uh, this is a rolling pin. I had this idea that I would make pizza on the trailer, but I think I'm going to take this out. It uh, hasn't proved too useful. These lids are for cups that I use in the trailer. Uh, that has a hole in it for, uh, for a straw, so I can use it when I'm driving. Multi-purpose is always good. I showed these before. It's a silicone colander, and I think it's a two or three quart bowl. And I liked it so much, I bought an extra one and got an extra bowl. So if you need a colander, I've got a spare colander I'm willing to give you. Um, just send me a postage paid, self-addressed stamped envelope and I'll ship you a colander like this. I only need one. Uh, I'm handling this stuff, it's pretty hot. Leaving these tubs out in the sun, they get hot. You may want to keep that in mind in your selection of equipment, that it's going to get hot at times. Okay. So these all nest and collapse, which is a good thing. These have worked out really well. Okay, uh, silicone, nested silicone tableware. It's a cup. So I've used these for a couple of years. They're pretty good. Uh, great for breakfast bowls, uh, serving dishes, all sorts of things. Salads, whatever you want to put in here. I'm assuming you eat fresh food. Uh, so these are. Uh, well worth the weight, well worth the space. They don't take up much space. Um, so there you go. Another cup. I may get rid of this one. I have enough of these cups on the board. This is a salad dressing holder. It doesn't leak. It's by Tupperware. Um, it's the only one I found that hasn't leaked. Okay. For dishes. I normally use plastic dishes. But sometimes, some trips, especially if you want to save water, uh, paper plates are more convenient, paper bowls. So I don't typically use disposable products, but occasionally I do. These are the lids for the silicone bowls. Can opener and a vegetable peeler. You know, everything as small as possible. 
This is a dish drying rack. The dishes will stand in here. You can put some various things in here. Um, I've used this a lot, but I'm thinking the plastic tubs I've got, the collapsible plastic tubs, work just as well. And I can dry things in there. Um, it doesn't weigh much. I'm still carrying it, but I, it's uh, up for judgment. Well, I've got an excess of towels on this trip. Uh, towels are good. A uh, bunch of cloth towels for drying dishes and just wiping your hands and things like that. So that's tub number one. This is the second tub that I carry. It's general use stuff. Let me uh, a lot of stuff. Put that Let me try and rip through uh, this. Tie wraps. Always useful. You never know when you're going to need them. Contractor garbage bags are a little heavier duty. Uh, these come in handy if you have to pack up your gear uh, and it's raining out and you don't want to store wet gear in your car or in your trailer. So I carry several of these uh, contractor bags, a couple of uh, candle lanterns uh, with extra candles stored in them. Haven't had to use them. A little ambiance doesn't hurt. This is a collapsible bucket if I have to tote water uh, to fill a trailer or for any one of a number of reasons. And I have a three gallon plastic pail on the back of the trailer, but this is what's in my tub. So if I need this in a wilderness area, I've got it. I've got a an offset funnel, which allows me to um, pour water directly into the trailer. And I have some mesh in here to help filter that. AC electric extension for either the inverter or for if I'm in a campground with AC and I need to extend my AC. Okay, don't laugh. These are folding hangers. I got them on eBay. They're very useful. They allow me to hang wet clothing under the, uh, the uh, alcove that I have, the four-legged pavilion, and allows it to drip dry out there. So um, they don't cost much and they don't weigh much. These folding hangers worked out great for hanging up wet clothing under the uh, REI alcove, let it drip dry. Uh, I got them on eBay for like a dollar each. So uh, they are very handy when it's raining out and you need them. I carry a couple of types of adhesive. I carry uh, Dow silicone glue. If I get a leak or I have to glue something, this is it. This is flowable silicone. Um, I got a big window on the front of here. It hasn't leaked yet, but if I need to, this flowable silicone flows into a crack and can plug leaks. Uh, I want to be prepared. If I'm on the road, <laughs> I don't want to have a hard time. Uh, you know, crazy type glue, crazy glue. Okay. Uh, this is a small backpacker stove. It runs on one of these little gas cans. If I choose to cook away from the trailer, or should I have a failure? You know, I'm always ready for a failure. Nothing's failed, but I'm ready. Uh, I can use this away from the trailer if I want to cook away from the trailer. If I run out of propane or something, some some reason that hasn't happened yet, I'm I'm ready for. Uh, this is mason twine. This stuff is great, uh, extremely strong. I tested it; had about an 80-pound test. I wouldn't stake my life on it, but boy, is it strong. Good for tying out various things. I carry about 500 feet of this stuff on the trailer. Um, when you buy mason twine, you want braided mason twine. Don't get the wrap stuff. That frays really badly. Um, this is a little better at fraying, but it's uh, it's pretty good stuff. It's cheap to use, you know, disposable. Okay, this is uh, these are two 12 volt extension cords, and they uh, allow me to run my 12 volt outside if I want to run a radio or something. Uh, I use them occasionally. I probably need one, but I've got two, so I'm carrying them for now until I decide otherwise. When I run that extension cord, I've got a 12 volt splitter. You know, you're always limited by your amperage, but I have a 12 volt splitter so I could run two devices off of it. 
These things are great. They plug into a 12 volt receptacle and you can wire anything to it. Uh, you can plug in banana test leads. You can do all sorts of stuff with this. I find I use them myself because I'm always testing my solar panels and 12 volt devices. So these come in handy for me. It looks like I'm a little heavy. I have some more of them in the trailer uh, besides this tub. So I'll probably take at least one of these out and uh, put it somewhere else. So uh, they're handy if you're electrical. You know, if you like to dabble with electricity, uh, uh, these might be useful. If I need something that's a heavy draw and it goes and it's an electrical draw and it go and I need to tap right to the battery and take the wiring out of the circuit, uh, this will do that. This is a uh, silicone rescue tape. It's self-healing, self-sealing tape. Um, if you have a leaky hose in your car or in a trailer or somewhere, you can wrap it with this and it uh, it fuses together. It melts together. Um, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, I've used it a couple of times. Uh, there's a video on YouTube of somebody taking a pipe which is leaking uh, water and they just wrap it with this and stop the leak. I carry some hot glue sticks in case I need to use them. I can melt them and glue something. The Ultimate MacGyver Rescue Tool, which is paper clips. Use them a lot. Nice short piece of wire for when you need it. This is a, uh, a 110 inverter. It goes from 12 volts to uh, 120. And uh, these are expensive to run. This one is good for 130 watts. That's not much. It's enough for me to run my electric shaver, my water pick, uh, a few other things. It's not enough for me to charge my laptop. Um, I, I did test the laptop in here and it um the laptop let's talk about electricity you've got the laptop which has a brick which plugs into ac which would plug into the inverter and this would plug into the battery um i, t I tested it when i plug the laptop into here it draws seven amps out of the dc battery seven amps an hour what i got instead was a uh, a small 12 volt um, car charger for my laptop. It just goes 12 volt to 12 volt. That charges the battery. That, that, that only consumes 4 amps. So by taking this out of the loop, I save 3 amps an hour. Um, it's fine for, you know, my electric shaver. Um, it's fine for the water pick. But um, it's expensive to use on your battery, meaning it uses a lot of juice. Um, but some people love inverters. I just have a small trailer and small battery need, you know, small electrical needs. I haul, well, my, my, my lens cleaning kit for my camera and for my binoculars. This is a 30 amp to 20 amp service. It allows me to, you know, in some campgrounds you can only get a 30 amp service uh, campsite. So this allows me to convert it. This is a, uh, this it's called a water thief. I've yet to use it, but it sounded like a good idea, you know, when you read these things at your desk, you know. Uh, this goes over a faucet. Some campgrounds, they are not threaded, the faucets. So you push this on there, it's a press fit, and you can hook your, your hose to this and then fill a trailer. You know, I've got buckets if I have to fill a trailer, but uh, this is just a convenience thing. I've yet to use it. Rubber gloves in case I need to perform medical examinations or uh, keep my hands clean if I'm doing something dirty. Okay, chopsticks. Uh, it's not that I love Chinese food. It's um, these are like little wooden dowels. I use them for everything, for stirring things. Uh, if I got to poke into something, they're just I find them very useful. A wood shim. Not sure what I'm going to use it for. This is a. Uh, ground tester which I use at campsites it allows me to uh, make sure the ground is safe before I plug the trailer in it's not a surge protector and it's not a uh, ground fault thing um, but at least it lets me check that the ground is okay so I don't get fried in the trailer AC splitter I guess it goes with the extension cord these are motion detector lights they run on triple A's <coughs> I've yet to use them, uh, but I still am holding them around. Uh, I'm going to use them before the summer's over and test them out. 
extra Velcro. If I need to strap together some things. This probably should be in the kitchen uh, bin. This is a silicone one cup coffee maker and you plunk in your, uh, your filters. I only occasionally drink coffee so it doesn't get much use. Uh, pretty much on green tea now. Doesn't take up much space. Guests come and they... These are shopping bags. I think they call these t-shirt shopping bags because they look like a t-shirt. Uh, I uh, keep a bunch of them on board. I find that small bags are better than big bags for disposing on the road. You can, uh, nobody gets pissed when you put a small bag into a garbage can, but they do get angry when you put a big hefty bag in there. Okay. A couple of more towels. I'm probably heavy on towels. These are the vert wings. I'll show those. They are very useful, very handy uh, for the kitchen. I have on the wings, when it rains out, if the rain is at any angle at all, it can, you know, if it's not vertical, it will uh, spill onto the, uh, onto the countertop. So they make these optional wings that uh, prevent that from happening. And they're great. A nice sheltered area. And that's the two tubs that go with me. 